Okay, so let's talk about the story of Miriam. The noble Quran reports to us when the angel said, Miriam, your Lord gives you good news of a word from him. His name is the Messiah, Isa, son of Miriam, of high standing in this world and the next world, one of those brought near. He will speak to the people in the cradle and when full grown and will be of the righteous. So, so Isa alayhi salam spoke to the people in his youth and in his adulthood. The angel Jabril was the messenger who brought this revelation to her, and she did not see him in his, his natural form. She saw him in another form. He came to her as a human being. Angels have the ability to do this, okay? Okay, Jabril, peace be upon him, took the form of a well-built, fully mature man because she would have been unable to look at him in his true form. The Almighty says, recall, in the book, Miriam is a surah in the is a surah in the Quran. When she withdrew from her people to a place towards the east and screened herself away from them. Then when we sent our spirit to her and took her and took on her the form of a handsome, well-built man. Okay? So when she saw in front of her a young man of handsome form and beautiful countenance who had pierced her veil to reach her, she thought that he meant to do her harm. She was chaste and pure, as Allah had brought her up. Therefore, she, had, she sought refuge with Allah to protect her from him. She said, she said to this angel, or to this man that she didn't know was an angel at this time, she said, I seek refuge from you with the all-merciful if you are God-fearing. So with, if, you, if you're listening, she said, I seek refuge from you. I seek refuge with, from you with the Almighty, the All-Merciful, if you are God-fearing. So this correlates to the people who don't understand that Allah means God, but a God means Allah, and Allah is his best name. So he said, if you are God-fearing, do not come any closer, I seek refuge with the, the Almighty. And she was a pious woman, and a humble woman, and a beautiful servant of Allah. He said to her, I am but your Lord's messenger, so that he can give you a pure boy. She said, how can I have a boy when no man has touched me? And I am not a loose woman. He said, just like that. The Lord says, this is easy for me. So that we can make him a sign for mankind and a mercy from us. It is a matter already decreed. So he came to give her this information. This is a powerful um, reading because it correlates the fact that Allah didn't speak to these creation, this human creation himself. He sent a noble messenger to the people to relate his information. And this is one of his best angels, his, one of his most noble angels. Uh, Jabril is of high status and is very high in importance and rank before Allah, okay? So I'm gonna wrap it up pretty shortly, but I want to also relate the information that the angels have been present throughout all the stages of creation, performing some duty. So angels have been around for very long times, even before the creation of the first human, okay? And even so, when we are in our, they are there when we are in our mother's womb, an angel was there, breathing a soul into us. They are there every day, reporting to Allah our deeds. They are there every second, recording what we whisper and speak. When the time of our death comes, they are ready to take our souls. When the day of judgment commences, an angel will blow the horn that will mark the commencement of the day of judgment. Angels are honorable slaves of Allah. They obey him and execute his commands. They do not disobey Allah in what he commands. And then this goes to the importance of, if this says they do not disobey Allah, remember when Adam was created, the first creation, and he told the angels to prostrate. So people have this misconstrued that uh, Satan was an angel and that he didn't do what Allah commanded him. But of course, some of us know that Satan was not an angel. He was a gin of smokeless fire, made of smokeless fire, correct? Okay, which means that angels do everything he asks, no question, no doubt, okay? They are noble messengers, alhamdulillah. I want to speak on this topic because I know that we talk about certain topics that some, some guys might have a hard time dealing with, you know, strict on our uh, teachings, 
But some things we gotta get out of our realm so we understand the reality that we're living in. So at this time, right now, it's angels right now recording the gathering that we're in, letting the Allah know, inshallah, that we're in the merciful, the best of places, because a lot has said that the mosque is the best of places, because what's going on? His remembrance, his worship, um, and and the best of people are in the mosque, alhamdulillah. So may Allah reward everyone for coming out tonight and uh, bless them in many ways beyond our imagination and bring us to a place of the most beautiful and most noble of states. And inshallah, I pray that we are all together in the heavenly abode. And then we'll let Amir say a last word. Thank you, Jamil. Um, so that was very relative to everything I said. It encompasses everything because the angel Jabril brought the revelation down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is the deen that we practice to this day. He says that this deen is perfect. It is, it is the way of life for, for mankind. So you stay true to your heart. You make your heart strong. You make your body physically strong. You make your brain strong. Make your heart strong. It makes your soul feel good. You can't endow in this worldly life. You want to get to the afterlife. This is temporary. The afterlife is forever. So inshallah, y'all get the gender. Alhamdulillah. Amen. Amen. Keep coming to the mosque. Every, every time we get a chance, is here every Monday and Thursday. Thanks to brother right here, sitting with the phone. <laughs> recording. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I hope y'all get thanks, the Thanks to Allah. And, and the queen uh, brought us all food. Y'all came to eat together like we were supposed to do. And good people, pious people, alhamdulillah. Mm. May Allah reward you. And, and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to say one last thing. I was going to tell you, I'm sorry. I got to cut it off. <laughs> so last Thursday this time, we came to the same dinner. All right? I had a long day. And I meant to relate this, I'm sorry. So when the angel Jabril came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, first thing he told him was to read. Now, we know that Prophet Muhammad didn't know how to read at the time, all right? But then he told me, and Prophet Muhammad related, he said, I do not know how to, to read. And the angel told him again, he said, read. And he told him once again, I do not know how to read. So then he, he scrolls me, every time he scrolls him very tightly, he told him to read. So the, the magnificence of this is that if this angel told this Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read, it's your duty to seek knowledge through reading. We have eyes to see with. Alhamdulillah, some people don't have that opportunity to do that. We have ears to hear with. Humbly lie, you can hear me speaking. Even if you couldn't see, you can hear what we were talking about. So we have many blessings that we have to be, and we're accountable for first and foremost, but also that we have to acknowledge and be grateful for, because what if you couldn't see or couldn't hear? How would you then learn? So Allah knows best. He's blessed with certain features on our bodies to utilize for his benefit. And the reading is one of the most important things to do. He didn't, and he didn't just say, Read the Quran. It's very, it's very, it's a lot of different texts and literature to read, and they're all, and there's some good things that uh, you can derive from all of these uh, books, inshallah. Uh, but, but my important, I read three books last Thursday. That's what I was going to. I read three books last Thursday. One was supplications, uh, learning new prayers. One was the Quran, and then one was the textbook that I was reading for a class I'm in, in right now. And even this book was teaching me uh, that I was reading for my class was teaching me some things. I was having a hard day. I was coughing, sneezing. And at the end of the night, after we came here to pray Isha, and then broke fast with Muslims, alhamdulillah, we, I went back home, and I was feeling bad after I prayed too soon over our guys. I was still feeling sick. I put my body on the floor, and I just put my head to the floor, and I looked around the house. It was quiet and peaceful, but I noticed the technology we have nowadays. I know Amir would talk about that. Uh, but we have the TV, the television. We got the computer. We got our iPhones and digital gadgets. We got so much technology. See, the Prophet Muhammad didn't have us back in the day, so on and so on. So we have to revert back to the way he thought. We have to keep distractions out of our mind so we can develop a, a, a likeliness to this book, the Quran, inshallah. The best book to teach you how to be the best of people. So, so sometimes you've got to cut all that stuff off and get back to what the angel Bill told Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Get you to read. This is for the young guys. I know the older guys probably understand this, but this is something that we teach ourselves and the youth, the people younger than us. Get them in